MSG isn't toxic. No, really, it's not. It isn't an evil chemical that gives people headaches or asthma or heart palpitations. How do we know? Science! MSG stands for monosodium glutamate, which is a naturally derived compound of sodium and glutamic acid. It's been commonly used in Asian cuisine for decades, and it's also a prominent part of Asian fast food in the U.S. But you probably know it best from the no MSG signs in Chinese restaurant windows, or from the ubiquitous social media campaigns that warn you about how horrible it is. You will hear many people swearing this bad reputation is well earned. It's not. It can't be because MSG is just a combination of sodium and a naturally occurring substance that's already inside your body. In fact, glutamic acid is made by human cells and many healthy foods have high concentrations of it. As far as sodium is concerned, there's less of it in MSG than there is in table salt. So why is everyone afraid of it? Because there was this one time when one uninformed person questioned it and then it blew up. Let's back up about a century and you'll see what we mean. MSG was first developed in 1908 by Japanese chemist Kikunai Ikeda. As soon as Professor Ikeda discovered that glutamic acid was responsible for the flavor of umami, he derived it from dried seaweed, secured a patent to produce it, and his brand, Ajinomoto, is still popular today. Umami is a delicious, savory flavor that is a critical component of Japanese cuisine. It is the fifth taste we all crave, the other four being salty, sweet, sour, and bitter. Ikeda's discovery came to American markets in the 50s, and for nearly 20 years, nobody reported having issues with it. But Americans soon became aware of the dangers food additives posed to their health. In 1968, the New England Journal of Medicine published a letter from a doctor who was complaining about feeling ill after eating at Chinese restaurants. He had a theory that maybe it was from the MSG. No proof, no tests, just a guess. Then, multiple readers responded with similar complaints, so scientists decided to study the phenomenon, and Chinese restaurant syndrome was born. Before long, the list of literature blaming Chinese food and MSG for a host of health problems exploded. Even 60 Minutes reported on MSG in the early 90s, and the American public trusted their recommendations. However, it has since been found that many of those initial studies had some critical flaws, the most notable being the fact that the study participants already knew whether their meals contained MSG. But recent research has found no discernible links between MSG and its associated symptoms, and the vast majority of participants for this research had zero reaction to what they were eating, even though they were eating food with MSG in it and even though they previously claimed to be sensitive to MSG. So does that mean everyone who claims to have MSG symptoms is lying? Of course not. The MSG myth is so pervasive at this point that some people are probably experiencing the nocebo effect, which is basically just the placebo effect in reverse. Instead of, say, taking a sugar pill and believing it made you better, you ate a spoonful of sugar and believed it made you worse. Despite the members of the medical community and the many prominent chefs who are now speaking publicly in favor of MSG, it's still hard to convince the general public. Let's face it, we aren't always entirely rational, and accepting something that conflicts with long-held beliefs can be hard for some people. But knowledge is power. So know this, if you don't want to ingest glutamic acid, you'll have to stop eating fish, meat, eggs, poultry, dairy products, protein-rich vegetables, lentils, and beans at the very least. And you'd want to stop feeding your babies the natural way because glutamic acid is also found in human breast milk. And if you're afraid of sodium, you'll need to avoid eating anything that contains salt. So that covers pretty much everything. Ultimately, whether you decide to eat MSG or not doesn't matter, and it's your choice to make. What does matter is that you make that choice in the most informed way possible. So, bon appétit!